there are two kinds of tools there's the declarative tools and then there are the programmatic tools declarative tools are easy to use they can be easily and automatically upgraded with releases because they are maintained and managed by salesforce what are declarative tools validation rules formulas data types uh, you have process builders flows right email templates reports and dashboards these are declarative tools point click just do a bit here and there and you will be able to handle it who manages it the platform how do they manage it by doing releases salesforce does three releases every year correct summer spring and winter so that's when they upgrade their tools they are low maintenance because we don't have to maintain it salesforce is maintaining it right and they are not impacted by governor limits as such because salesforce knows the limits that they are on so salesforce handles it right so you can use validation rules formula summary fields process builder flow builder approval process to configure everything that can be achieved declaratively correct but if you have to go for a custom interface or if, if you have to do some click through path or if you to do a third party integration or some calculation based nested logic you have to do it programmatically and that's when limits come that's when custom coding comes and that's that's when it becomes high maintenance because salesforce will not take care of that for you it's custom you take care of it right so that's the declarative versus programmatic broad look all right now if it's too soon for development for you this is something that i'm telling you before moving on to the curriculum because now we are very close to starting writing actual code and you know understanding apex if you are someone who feels it is too soon for development the last slides that we discussed there are some items that you did not completely understand right there are some words that you did not completely get through or you think that okay my salesforce declarative skills or my admin skills need to be improved first to come into development then you can stop here and you can start with the administrator curriculum first right so if i take you through the administrator curriculum right so this is a playlist where you can start with so if you take a look at this playlist this has about 29 videos right and i'll encourage you take a look at this particular curriculum or this particular master class first and then come back to learning development because this will set up or set you up in terms of understanding the declarative side of salesforce right so you'll understand okay this is how things are on salesforce and then on top of it you can start writing custom okay so if it is too soon for you to start development if it is if if if, if this res resonates with you start with administrator first and then come back here to continue development all right but if you are someone who was comfortable with all these slides that we discussed and, and pretty much everything that we discussed you already uh, somehow knew but you would want to learn how to write flows first right why do i want to go custom let's start with flows first and let's learn that tool so that i'm good declaratively i'm good with flow builder and then i can learn writing custom code if this is what resonates with you i'll suggest you go and start with flows right so if you're good with the administrator you can take a look at the flow curriculum this is a really good curriculum i have on the flow builder and this will let you if you go to the playlists you'll take a look at the flow builder masterclass right so this here is another 34 videos and i take a look at and explain you about 15 to 16 use cases with pretty much everything around flow trigger flow builders right so the flow builder masterclass will ensure that you know all about the salesforce admin and then also you are mastering the art of flows or configuring flows once you're good with that i will motivate and welcome you to work and start writing custom code so that is ideally how the path should be but again if you're someone who does who wants to start immediately with writing custom code you feel free to continue this particular masterclass or else take a pause here go back hone your skills on the admin side become a pro in writing flows and configuring flows and then come back here and continue doing development right that's the ideal path according to me all right one final question before we actually start um, uh, before we actually start hands-on and before we actually start jumping into the developer console and doing apex uh, you might have a question which org to use right so essentially there are three orgs right three types of orgs you have a production environment you have a sandbox environment and you have a developer edition environment now you and i right now are going to practice things right and production and sandboxes are only procured by businesses because you have to pay for it 
I'll encourage you to create your own developer edition org. How do you do that? You just go to uh, your browser and just go with developer.salesforce.com slash sign up. And that's where you can create a free developer edition org for yourself, a full featured copy of the platform. And this is for free. So you get one or two licenses and you can pretty much practice what you want. Just fill in this form, hit the sign me up button. You'll get an email on the email address that you have mentioned here. It takes about three to five minutes. So don't be impatient. Just uh, uh, let that email come through and you'll have your own environment. Let me show you this environment that I have right here is a developer edition environment. It's not a production. It is not a sandbox. So I'd encourage you to keep everything on your developer edition org. A, a good thing to know. How do you identify whether it is a production or a sandbox? If the URL that you're hitting is login.salesforce.com with your username and password, that's a production URL, right? And if you want to hit a sandbox URL for your uh, business requirements and you will hit test.salesforce.com. Okay, but for developer edition, the free edition that we have for our practice is basically login.salesforce.com. All right, so this is a copy of a, produ of the, of a production instance, but comes with limitations. It has only about 5 MB of storage. It has only two licenses available. So you cannot actually run an actual business on the developer edition. You have to just use it for practice. And that's what we'll be doing. All right, so that clarifies what org do you want to use for your practice and what are the two orgs businesses use, right? One is the production env environment, one production org, and there, are, there can be multiple sandboxes. These are nothing but test environments. Uh, you might call it as a developer sandbox. Then you have a um, UAT sandbox, user acceptance sandbox. Then you might have a pre-prod sandbox and then finally a production sand production environment, right? So that's how the chain works. Awesome. So that concludes what I wanted to give you context around and also set the foundation before actually jumping into writing code and doing a lot of things uh, uh, on the screen. Thank you.